sci-fi and fantasy short stories. Bone Eaters by Alaraz501 My town is historical, which means we have many old and abandoned buildings that had many uses over the centuries. One of these are the city fortifications that were defensive during the Middle Ages, but now in modern times, they don't serve any real purpose. Due to communist landscaping during the past regime, there were many small parks and social areas constructed around them. These places needed some maintenance and services, which also needed space. This space was made by using old rooms built into the walls and reconstructing them into bathrooms, buffets, drink joints, maintenance rooms, etc. Later, when the parks were left to rot, the same fate befell these rooms. To avoid them being used by the homeless, the town administration put padlocks on the doors and painted over windows. But what is a lock to a creative mind but an obstacle to be overcome? Soon, the rooms were destroyed, sprayed by graffiti, smelling of urine and garbage, littered with empty bottles and used syringes. The town wanted to stop this pointless wasting of space, and they decided to assign cleanup crews made up from the unemployed to start cleaning up the areas and report any homeless to the police. They started their impossible task room by room, but due to budget cuts, the work was slow, and in the end, there was just a small group of a few guys cleaning the places. One such evening, they found a sleeping homeless man in one of the rooms that used to be a bathroom. Strange thing was that they found him because he had a flashlight on, pointed right in front of him. They put down their mops and buckets and took the old man out. The younger one of the cleanup guys was wondering why the homeless man would risk being found by having a flashlight on. The homeless man had told them that the light was for protection and that it was the only thing that he needs to survive inside the city walls. They told him that animals are not that vicious, and the light would not protect him against people. He told them it was against the bone eaters that live in the walls. They laughed it off and called the police on the crazy hobo. The night was still young, and the shift had ended, so they went for a couple of beers at the nearby pub, when one of the guys remembered that they had left one of the mops in a bucket in that room where the homeless guy was hiding. Since the town was strict on checking the equipment, he decided to go back and put it in the maintenance hut. After a while, the guys had all left for home, except for the youngest man who was waiting for his friend, the one who went back to take care of the equipment. He waited till midnight when the pub closed, and he was left out on the street. He lit up a smoke and started walking towards the section of the walls where the bathroom was. He thought his friend was playing a prank on him, or just simply forgot and went home. He thought to go at least check if he put the things that they forgot back in. There was still a mop and a bucket missing in the maintenance hut, so he went to the bathroom to find out what the hell happened. He took out his own flashlight and walked into the dark maze that was the structure inside the city walls. He remembered the way, and he was just crossing the hallway that led into the bathroom when he noticed that there were small critter skeletons scattered all over the floor. Normally that was nothing unusual, because there are many skeletons of mice, birds, lizards, and other small animals all around these places, either from predators or just as a natural consequence. He would not have noticed them, but the fact that there were so many, many more than what he had remembered from before when they found the homeless guy. He could also hear a faint cracking noise all around him and started to get a little uneasy. The crunching he made by stepping on the bones, feathers, and pieces of glass on the floor did not make him feel any better. Finally, he reached the bathroom and he saw that not only the equipment that they had forgot was still there, but he also found his friend's work vest lying on the floor. He pointed the beam of light at it and came closer. 
He wondered why he would not take the equipment back and why he would leave his vest on the floor. He heard the cracking sounds again, and sort of like a clicking, like when you grind your teeth. He turned around, but he was alone. Suddenly, he realized the most important question. If this guy's vest was here, then where was he? He started to look around, but only thing he saw was garbage, broken glass, toilets, and small piles of animal skeletons all around him. He could hear the sound again, this time coming from the wall in front of him, and in the dark, he thought he saw the floor moving. He pointed the light at it. More bones, more skulls, small rib cages and vertebrae. He noticed the floor moving elsewhere. Light, more bones. Other direction, more bones. The floor started to be filled by a mass of small skulls, all pointing their empty eye sockets at him. He started backing away when he tripped over something and almost fell. It was a shoe, same shoe his friend was wearing that night. It was his shoe. There was a small, mangled bird skeleton clenching on it, and when he tried to take it off, the white skull turned at him and pecked his fingers with its rotting beak. He screamed in pain and let the shoe fall to the floor, breaking the little skeleton into pieces. When he looked up, holding his bleeding finger, he saw the bones crawling to the bigger piles and merging with them, the piles of bones themselves moving towards him, clacking and clicking. He pointed the light at them, and they stopped. At that moment, he remembered what the old homeless guy was saying about bone eaters. Chills went down his spine, and he turned around trying to run out, but the hallway behind him was already filled with a sea of small, rotting skeletons, all crawling towards him like a river of bone, cartilage, and teeth. He started to point the light all around him, trying to stop the approaching horror, when his flashlight started flickering. No, 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 damn it, he said checking the flashlight and realizing the batteries were dying. The protective beam of light started to fade, and soon he was surrounded in the complete dark by a hungry flood of carcasses. He felt how they started biting on his feet. He screamed in pain and started looking for any chance of escape, any exit, anything that would save him from this horrible fate. Then... When he was losing all hope, he noticed a small streak of light coming from one of the walls, and in his desperation, he ran towards it, crushing the crawling menace with his shoes. It was a crack in one of the painted-over windows, and the light was from a street lamp outside. He ran faster, dove out through the window into the cold air of the night, and crawled, cut and bruised from his jump, to the street lamp, where he stayed till morning, shaking and hugging the lamppost that saved his life. Police found him in the morning and took him for questioning. Weeks later, the town administration walled off all entrances to the structures with bricks and concrete, left them be, saying that they were a safety hazard for the citizens and that they were to be left like this until someone comes up with a purpose for them. They are walled off to this day, except for one window. Alaraz501 is a freelance artist on DeviantArt and a collector of urban legends from Slovakia. Bone Eaters is just one of nine stories from his urban legends series, this one is in its own way special, not because of its actual content, but because this one is the only story that he had heard from multiple people in multiple countries. First, in his own town in Slovakia, 
Then, years later, from a homeless man on a train station in Czech Republic. And then, once again, from a street artist in Krakow, Poland. And yet, it is not part of any mainstream folklore as far as he knows. Hey guys, I hope you like this bonus story. I'm trying to get a couple of horror stories out before Halloween hits. I have high hopes to get one every day, but we'll see what I can actually get done. As for this story, I would have to say that many of my favorite stories are actually based on urban legends and cryptozoology. It's that little nagging thought in the back of my mind that if so many people have told the same tales for so many centuries, what caused the myth in the first place? Obviously, I don't believe in it, but it's just that old knowledge. Where did it come from? What caused them to think this? I absolutely love that kind of stuff. And getting the chance to hear a little-known tale from the other side of the world like this, it's one of the reasons that I love doing this channel. I love working with people from other cultures because the ideas that work their way into fiction can be so fresh and different from what I normally see here in America. I hope you guys got a kick out of this too. <laughs> if you did, make sure to leave a comment and a thumbs up if you're on YouTube. And if you're listening to the podcast... So be sure to subscribe for brand new stories twice a week. I'm Chris Heron, and that's it for today's Tall Tale TV.